Hey guys, so favorite book Friday and I just got this in the mail. The Market Gardener. And so I have not finished the book yet, but I've started it and um what I really respect about him is his tidiness level. And he talks about how because he's tidy and he can keep things organized, it allows him to make the most of what he has in his growing space. And he took a big monster boost up on what he does from people like Elliot Coleman. So I kind of wanted to talk about these books combined. Now, Elliot Coleman also has the Four Season Gardener, or the Four Season Garden. And that is about how in Maine, he has a harvest in February. I mean, all year round, he has things that he's pulling out of his greenhouse. And he does that by having cold season um, plants that get covered just before the weather turns bad. So that as you have your freeze thaw, freeze thaw, heavy, heavy freeze for several months, he has them in double rows of protection. He has remay, or it's like a, a white kind of um, translucent fabric that allows light and airflow but not but it protects against freezing he has mini hoops inside his main greenhouse so that he has a double layer of protection against the freezing and he does have some houses where he has a little bit of heat but he also has houses where there's no heat and with things like spinach and swiss chard and carrots and um what else did he have lots of lots lots of greens um, those are the things that he harvests in the cold months. He planned them in like July and August and he harvests them all through the winter. And so his production and his money comes equally from winter harvest as it does from things like tomatoes and cucumbers in the middle of summer. And so that's what he does. He has a four season garden and he's a market gardener, a truck gardener, and that's how he makes his living is with gardening all four seasons. Now with John, John Martin, Martin Fortier, I'm, no, I'm not saying it right. <laughs> He's French Canadian. And um, they're in Quebec, if I remember correctly. So they're an hour north of Vermont is what I've read so far in this. He is in a cold season climate as well, but he does not garden in the winter. He makes enough during his regular growing season that they actually go on vacation for three months out of the, out of the year and go to like Mexico. And um, I think he said they have three or four full-time employees that, that work on their farm as well. So that's enough to support their little family of four, which is two parents, two children, as well as supporting three full-time employees. And the way that he does it, because he only farms on one acre, and the same thing goes for Elliot Coleman. He farms on one acre. It could be two, but I think it's one. It's less than two, at least. Um, and he does it on one acre. And the way that he does it is with efficient spacing, uh, very, very rapid replanting, and um, com not companion planting, but rotation of beds and choosing plants that work well for his climate so that he's not fighting against his climate. I'm trying to get out of the shade. For some reason, I've got shading problems here. Um, and so if, if I'm looking into this because, first off, I want an efficient garden to feed my family. If we didn't have to um, go to the grocery store for fruits and vegetables, um, and we just went and bought bulk, um, staples once a year, things like salt and oatmeal and beans. If we were able to just go buy those in bulk once a year and have them in storage, which is what we do, we would be completely self-sufficient. If I could get my garden off, our fruit trees are doing well and the girls glean off them. They're not big enough yet to be able to put anything in storage, but the girls snack on them all during the summer months. We have Nanking cherries and, um, Aronia. Speaking of which, if you've never tried Aronia, if you wait until they're black, they're actually quite tasty. What else do we have? Peaches, apples, pears, strawberries, raspberries, gooseberries, uh, clove currants, apricots, plums. 
um, service berries, uh, honey berries, and cold weather cherries. So we have all of those fruit that are now coming up. Some of them are coming up on five years old now. And um, we had a really good harvest of pears this year. The apples were good, but bugs got into them. So next year we need to do, we probably need to order a package of um, ladybugs. Um, the organic orchards that I know of in our area that don't have to spray and don't have insect problems are the ones that buy big packages of ladybugs and just completely annihilate all the nasties with these ladybugs. Um, and they, But they also have cattle that graze underneath the trees and eat up all of the rotten apples. And so that could also be part of their management system is that by having cattle grazing in their fruit orchards, they don't have anywhere for the um, pests to breed underneath the trees. I kind of wonder if pigs wouldn't be a better bet for us because we've had cows and they tried to eat our trees. They actually did some pretty good damage to them. Um, anyway, back on target. So, to me, I keep trying to have my big push be the garden, but I'm really struggling with my soil. This next year, I'm going to try the mitt leader method um, as one of the methods that I'm trying, but I'm going to do a huge amount of research with the market gardener and also reread Elliot Coleman's The New Organic Grower and see what is common between them. What? Here's the problem. Any kind of intensive gardening, um, I'm really good at the animal husbandry stuff, but I, I struggle at finding time to do the animal husbandry and the homeschooling and the cooking from scratch and the intensive gardening, which is why I really like the mulch method because if I can't get out there to water them one week, they don't die. Um, however, I see that those are not efficient methods for actually feeding my family fruits and vegetables. The fruits are coming on kind of on their own, so mostly it's vegetables. And until I can get some kind of method worked out to where I can grow an efficient, very productive, abundant garden, I'm really not self-reliant because we can't just live on meat and dairy. Um, and so that's where I see that our chink in our armory is right now, is our garden. And so these are the things that I'm researching now. And I may just have to bite the bullet. And instead of feeling like I'm doing something completely permaculture, wonderful, organic, I may just have to switch to mint leader and um, try for a couple years the chemical fertilizing way just to get my feet wet and have a really big successful garden. Um, it may just be what I need to do. I'm hoping that I can find some way to kind of hybridize them between this and that because I would rather not use the um, chemical fertilizers. Uh, so go ahead and check these out. If you can find them at the library, do. This, I think, cost me $14. And um, they didn't have it at my library, and that's why I ordered it, because I, I feel like if in Quebec you can make enough money on one acre to be able to support a family of four plus three full-time employees, um, I can put my nose to the grindstone a little bit and see if, if I can learn something from him that would allow me to do it on my homestead. And, and again, initially, I just want to feed my family. If I got good enough at it, that I had extra produce to sell to add income into my family, that would be fantastic. But first, I need to start on a scale that I can succeed at and just feed my own family. So, we'll talk to you guys later.